Hello, uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on Return to Dark Tower as you can see. This is a newer game. I know there's already a lot of videos out on it, but uh, <laughs> I'm just getting around to it. Actually, I wasn't going to do one. I don't really like doing videos on games with apps because then you got to show the app and all that. But I decided what the heck, I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, I had just played it uh, again today, so I figured I may as well go ahead and do a video. So let me get started with uh, how to set up and then we'll go on to how to play. Now you may be wondering what this is. Um, in this game, you have to kind of set facing your kingdom, but your character may move around to other sides of the board. And uh, with the tower, which you'll see in a minute, um, sitting in the middle of the board it's kind of hard to see what's on the other side of the table so i'd read on the board game geek forums that using a lazy susan to turn the board around was a good idea so that's what i've got here so let's get started uh, with set up and the first thing to do is lay out the board so you set up the board now if you're playing with more than one person each player would be sitting uh, facing a kingdom. You see the kingdoms are divided by these uh, rivers here. So this is the south kingdom, this is the east kingdom, this is the north kingdom, and this is the west kingdom. And again they're divided by the rivers. So if you're playing four players one would be sitting facing the south, one would be sitting facing the east, one would be sitting facing the north, and one facing the west. But since I'm playing uh, by myself um, I'll, my, I'll just be sitting over here but I'll have to determine uh, which kingdom each of my players would be facing but again with the board on lazy Susan I can just kind of turn it so uh, we'll get to that when we do the player setup but anyway first thing you do is set the table out I mean the uh, board out with the player facing each kingdom Next you place the buildings on the board. Each kingdom has four buildings, citadel, sanctuary, bazaar, and village. So these are the uh, citadel uh, buildings. So you'd put one in each citadel space uh, in each kingdom on the board. So let me do that. Alright, so as you can see I've got my citadels on the board and now I'll go ahead and set up the sanctuaries, uh, villages, and bazaars. Alright, so now I've got it set up so in each kingdom I've got a bazaar, a village, a sanctuary, and a citadel and you can see that I've got that uh, done in each board. Now. I'm going to be playing a three-player game, you know, by myself as three players. But if you were playing um, with one player, just one character, then you would have... Um, you still set up all the kingdoms, but any kingdom where a player is not going to be uh, part of, um, that kingdom is known as a dormant kingdom. So I'm going to be playing by myself as three players, so I'm going to use the West Kingdom the South Kingdom and the East Kingdom, the North Kingdom will be known as a dormant kingdom because there won't be a player uh, facing that kingdom. Alright, next you'll put your warrior tokens, your 24, exactly 24 skulls, and your spirit tokens in a supply. Next you'll take your gear cards, and there's three um, six different types of gear cards three of each so you'll set those out in individual stacks so let me get that done so again you've got six different types of gear and three of each of them so you lay those out next you'll shuffle your treasure deck and deal out three forming your treasure market Next you'll take your potion cards, shuffle them up, and form a draw deck of those. Get your corruption deck, shuffle that up, and place it uh, for a face down draw deck. And next you'll take your companion cards, your quest markers, and your haggle die, and just set those somewhere near the board. 
for the uh, player setup each player will take one of the um, hero boards and place that in front of themselves now again normally if you're playing all around a table um, one player would have their board you know whoever's going to be the south kingdom in front of the south kingdom whoever's going to be the west kingdom would have their player board over here in front of the west kingdom but since i'm playing solo and on this table i'm just going to have my three player boards uh, down here in front of me but this player the relic hunter is going to be the west kingdom the uh, orphan scion is going to be the south kingdom and the brutal warlord is going to be the east kingdom and the north kingdom as i mentioned before is going to be a dormant kingdom each hero board has three virtue tile virtue tiles that meet meet <laughs> match the player color you'll put put those um, with the uh, inactive side face up on these slots of your players board and I've done that here for the other uh, players each kingdom has a matching virtue tile for instance this one is for the player playing in the east kingdom that one will go face up and active uh, in the player that's uh, playing for the East Kingdom. The player playing for the South Kingdom would get this virtue tile. And finally the player playing for the West would get this one. And again you can see it says Champion of the West, Champion of the South, Champion of the East. And if you're playing with a fourth player or you're, you know, you can make them north, south, east, west, whichever one. Again, I'm only playing three players, so I don't have one for the north. So my champion of the north uh, virtue tile just gets set aside back in the box. Each player collects our starting resources, which it shows right here. Seven warriors and one spirit. And that's for each. Uh, all the players apparently have the same. Seven warriors and one spirit. So this is a five uh, warrior, and this is two, so that's seven. And then this is a one spirit. Um, these are five spirits. And again, I I guess just to save space, I'm putting those on my player board. Um, you could just put them in your player's area um, if you have more space. But anyway, let me get the seven warriors and one spirit uh, set up for my other two players. And there are more tokens than these. This is just all I got out right now. The other ones are over here in this bags. All right, so I got my seven warriors and one spirit for the orphan scion, seven warriors and one spirit for the brutal warlord, and of course the um, seven warriors and one spirit for my relic hunter. Then each player will place their figure in the uh, space with the citadel in their home kingdom which normally that's the one they would be sitting in front of so for my blue player the relic hunter his home kingdom is the west kingdom so his figure will go here with the citadel uh, here for the orphan scion uh, her home kingdom is the south kingdom so she goes here where there's a citadel and finally for the brutal warlord his home kingdom is the east kingdom and his figure will go over here where there's a citadel. All right, next thing you do is get the tower, make sure all the seals, these seals uh, come off, make sure all your seals um, are on all sides of your uh, tower. Then you go ahead and turn it on. There's a button down here. It's gonna make a beep. It's gonna have some lights. Alright, next thing you do is start up the app, which I have here. Um, you do start new game. Turn on the tower, I've already done that. Hit next. Now it's going to connect uh, via Bluetooth to the tower. Uh, that didn't work, it says retry. Right. Now the tower is going to be making some noises and whirling sounds and 
uh, while the app is calibrating with it. All right. And it's going to make that scary sound, and then that means it's uh, pretty much ready. And if so, your app will say tower ready. You hit continue. Now, there's two modes the normal cooperative mode, and there is a competitive mode. I'm only going to be going over the cooperative mode. Um, if you want a harder difficulty, you can select greedy and if you have the alliances expansion which I don't you can select that so we'll stay with the cooperative and hit uh, continue now you're going to select the number of players again I'm playing a three player game solo but three players so I'm going to select three players continue all right now you select uh, which main goal you want so you can uh, arrow through to choose different ones but the uh, game suggests uh, this one the recover Azkul's treasures as your first uh, you can also select random if you want to just pick one random but again the, the instructions suggest this one is your first one so I'm going to hit select then you select your adversary again you can you can hear the tower making noises over there um, but anyway uh, the instructions say there's different adversaries, but the instructions say to choose Astrider. They suggest as your first one. Again, you could pick one randomly if you want. I'm going to hit select. Well, I thought I did. Okay, now you're going to choose uh, which foes you want uh, to battle against. So here you're choosing a level 2 foe. Uh, I'll take the Oryx. Again, you can choose any one of these. All right, now we'll choose our level three foe. Um, I'll just pick this Lemur, and then we'll choose our level four foe, and I'll do Titan. All right, then we hit continue. So then it shows a summary. Uh, our main goal, um, our main adversary, and then uh, the foes that uh, we're going against and you'll want to go ahead and get the cards um, and tokens out for these uh, foes and adversaries so here's the card for the ash strider that's going to be the main uh, foe you'll have to fight if you get that far then here's the card for the uh, Oryx, Lemur, and Titan foes that I chose. And those just kind of tell you um, what kind of advantages can be used against them, like against these guys, melee and undead advantages. It also shows the level, which is also the number of cards, but we'll talk about that when we get into battle. It shows what they might do when battling, like this one may make you lose gear or uh, make you lose spirit. And it kind of shows what they'll do when they fire an event. So this one, Oryx, adds skulls to buildings in the kingdom. So anyway, that's what the score, this, the uh, cards kind of give you some information about the enemies that you'll be facing. You'll also get out the tokens for the enemies um, and foes. So, you know, there's the Ashtrider token. If you get to where he comes out and you have to battle him, that'll go on the board. This is for the Titan if a Titan spawns. Um, again, there's some for the Lemur. I don't know how to say that. Um, and, he, and they also show what advantages can be used against them, just like the card. Um, and again, for the for the Oryx so just set those aside somewhere any other tokens or cards um, you can just leave in the box or set somewhere on the side of the table they may or may not be used depending on what scenario you choose and what happens in the scenario but now that we've got all that we go ahead and confirm setup now we'll do some start of game info set up so it says uh, place two skulls on each cit citadel and bazaar so in each kingdom we have to place two skulls on each bazaar 
and on each citadel. So let me do that for all four kingdoms. All right, as you can see, I've got two skulls on each bazaar and uh, citadel in all four kingdoms. So we finished uh, that step. Hit continue. Take the four river of fire tokens from the box. So that is these. And again, we'll just set those aside. Um, those are scenario dependent so you know that won't ha happen in every game you play hit continue all right the first player gains the zyda gains zyda as a companion so you find your companion deck and whoever your first you chose as your first player which for me it's the blue player here uh, gains uh, this zyda as a companion and you know gets the power associated with that one so for instance here it says you can spend one treasure to gain three wild advantages we can do that once per turn we'll talk more about advantages and all of that when we get to battling and that kind of thing but let's continue with our setup all right now it's telling us to spawn some foes so we got to spawn a oryx in the lesser tombstones it tells you which kingdom the east kingdom and shows you where it is and tells what it's called there so now you take an oryx token put it in the uh, east kingdom in the lesser tombstones which is right here so you take an oryx token and put it there all right we've done that so we'll hit next now we spawn another oryx in the west kingdom in the lost lands and it kind of shows you where it is there so that's here so i'll take another oryx token spawn him there and hit next and spawn another oryx in the north kingdom in the broken lands so again that's <laughs> why the lazy susan is easier um, so the broken lands are right here, so we'll spawn an oryx there, and then we'll just turn our game back to how I had it originally. Alright, so we spawned him. Alright, now we need to put a lemur in the south kingdom in the howling desert. And that happens to be right here where our hero and citadel is. All right, hit next. And finally, we've completed setup. So we go here. Now it kind of tells us a little bit about uh, some story and tells us where our main uh, goal is. You got a quest in Cloud Hold, which is in the West Kingdom. Um, but to, to do that, you have to have four of Askel's treasures. So you'll have to um find and get you'll notice some of these treasures say ask goal on them so there's at least four uh, different treasures in the treasure deck that say ask goal on them so one player will need to collect uh, all four treasures and have at least five of their virtues unlocked so you start with uh two unlocked so you'd have to unlock another two so once a player has uh, four of Askel's treasures and f five of their virtues unlocked, they can come to uh, where this main goal is going to be. So let's find the main goal uh, marker and place it uh, here in the West Kingdom in Cloud Hold, which is here. Um, so some, once somebody completes that quest, the, the main goal quest, then that will spawn uh, Ash Strider the main villain and then if you defeat him um, then you'd win the game so that's telling us where to put the main goal and a little bit of story behind it hit next start month one the game is played over a series of months um, during each month players will take uh, various number of turns during the first month every player just gets one turn each and uh, after that, 
the months will have a variable number of terms, number of uh, turns that the players will get to take. Um, and it shows in the manual, I think, for a three-player game, the average number is eight turns per month. Now, if you get to the end of the sixth month and you still haven't uh, defeated the main foe, then the players lose the game. That's one of the ways the players t can lose the game. So anyway, we start month one, hit start. You can hear the tower there. So it kind of tells you what's out there. Uh, there's no companion quest. Uh, during the first month, there's no companion quest, but starting like in the second month and going forward, there'll be companion quests. Um, and also adversary quests. During the first month, no, no companion quest or no uh, adversary quest, so it just says combi for the storm. But you do have the main goal, and again, it tells you what that is. Uh, recover Askel's treasures. You have to be in cloud hold with four of Askel's treasures and five virtues. And the one player that's going to attempt that quest has to have that. It can't be, you know, one player has two of the treasures, another player has two of the treasures. No, one player, whoever's going to go attempt to do that main goal in cloud hold, has to have all uh, four or four of Askel's treasures and have. Uh, at least five of their virtues unlocked and we'll talk about how to do that later but uh, why don't we start talking about what you can do on a turn because that's where we'd be now we're at month one turn one you start with your first player and he would get to take his turn so the player board kind of uh, gives a good thing of what you can do on your turn here so at the start of your turn you can do what's called your banner action. Now that's different from for each player. For the relic hunter, his banner action is he can gain a potion, which he would just draw a potion card and put it in his inventory. There's no limit to the amount of potion cards you can have. Um, the orphan scion's banner action is to gain a spirit, so she would just draw a spirit and put it in her inventory. And the Brutal Warlord here, his banner action is to gain five warriors. So again, at the start of your turn, you can do your banner action. It's optional, but I don't know any reason you'd ever not want to do it. Then, in the middle of your turn, you can do, in any order, you can move, do one heroic action, and do one reinforce action. If you're at one of these buildings... Again, you can do them in any order, and you can break up your move. Um, you know, it says split as needed. So you can, you see, you can move three, um, but you could decide, well, I'm going to move one, uh, do a reinforce action, then move two more and do a cleanse action, um, something like that. So you can do any of these three in any order, and again, uh, you can take part of your move action, do one of these actions, and take another part of your action, and do another one of these actions. But um, you can only do one heroic action, and you can only do one uh, reinforce action. And then at the end of your turn, you have to drop a skull into the tower. So let's talk about each of these actions. All right, well, move is just as easy as it says. You can move any of these spaces that are border each other with a gold line and a, across the river uh, that's one one space to move so you know you could move one two three or uh, one two three you know, one two three um, nothing blocks your movement enemies Enemies don't block your movements, buildings, skulls, nothing blocks your movement. You can always move up to your movement. Into In each adjacent space is one uh, move. Now you'll notice it says here you can spend one spirit to double your move. So um, you have to do that before you start moving, but if you wanted to move uh, six, you could spend one spirit, put it in the supply, and double your move, and now you can move six spaces instead of just three. Something like uh, this item um, 
uh, this gear card um, if you have that which adds one to your base move so uh, your base move would then be four so if you spent a spirit to double it you would then be able to move eight instead of uh, just three so if you have something that already adds to your move um, like that trusted uh, trusted maps over there um, again you're doubling your, the move you would have so if you had that your move would be four if you spend a spirit you would double it so you'd get to move eight and again you can't decide move a few spaces and then decide oh well I want to double it now no you have to before you ever start your move you have to decide whether you're going to spend that spirit to double it all right let's talk about the heroic actions well that tells you exactly what they are so cleanse you can remove all the skulls in your space. So if you're this character and you decide I'm going to take the cleanse heroic action, you could take all the skulls that are in your space, put them back into the supply, and that's pretty much the cleanse action. Um, one thing here, anytime after you take a heroic action, you get to gain two spirit. So after you took that cleanse action, took those two skulls off the building, put them back into the supply, um, then you would get to gain two spirit. Now the reason you want to get rid of these skulls on buildings um, are several actually. First of all, if you ever have to place a skull or drop a skull into the tower and you don't have one to do that, everybody loses the game. So you can see there's already just a few in there. So it's a good idea to get rid of the skulls around buildings because that puts them back into the supply. Um, other reason is if you would ever have to add a fourth skull to a building, then that destroys the building. And whoever, uh, whoever's home kingdom that is, um, where the building is destroyed has to take a corruption card and we haven't talked about corruption cards yet but we will um, so if, if you ever have to place a fourth skull on a building um, that would destroy the building whoever's home kingdom that is uh, has to take a corruption card and the the three skulls that were already on that building go out of the game they don't go back into the supply they're out of the game now the fourth skull that would have been added that destroys the building does go back into the supply but the three that were already on there are out of the game so that's a way to lose skulls and lose buildings which then that building's not available for you to take a reinforce action at and also again uh, that gives you a corruption card so let's talk about corruption whenever you get a corruption you draw it you have to put it on your board and it gives you some kind of detriment like this one is you cannot cleanse a building with three skulls you can have up to two corruption cards if you would ever gain a third corruption card then all the players lose the game so you get corruption cards again for if a building in your home kingdom gets destroyed uh, you get corruption cards if you ever um, if you're battling or uh, doing a quest and you have to lose some something like uh, warriors or spirit or uh, potions or if you ever have to lose something and you don't have it to lose then you gain a corruption card all right so that's cleanse again you can remove uh, skulls from a building in your space now this player the orphan scion has uh, one of her virtues that she starts with is after you cleanse you can remove one skull from any building so she could then if she cleansed here and removed these two skulls she could then remove one skull from any building on the map it doesn't just have to be her home kingdom or where she's at it could be any uh, building so that's a pretty good power she has all right next is battle so you can battle a foe in your space so <clears throat> Uh, for instance, here, the orphan Scion, she's in a space with this Lemur. If she wanted to take that heroic action instead of a cleanse, she would choose to battle. And when you're going to battle, you choose the battle icon on the map. 
then you choose which foe you're going to battle. For instance, here she's going to battle the Lemur, or Lemur, I don't know how you say it. So you would select them and hit battle. All right, and then it's then going to bring up a number of uh, cards, and you have to select cards depending on the normal of a number of cards depending on the level of the foe you're fighting. And remember, the Lemur is a level three, so she would have to select uh, you know, three. You know, some cards are apparently worse than others, so she would select three. So then it shows you the first one that comes up. One at a time, drop two skulls into the power into the tower. That's what she has to do. But one of the things when you're battling is you can spend advantages if you have them. Now remember, I said here that the Lemur uh, magic and undead advantages can be played on them. So she has right here as one of her base um, virtues. She has one magic advantage. If she was uh, fighting in a desert, which she is, and you can, uh, there's icons in the manual, but uh, this symbol here is desert, and of course it's named a Howling Desert, um, and because of that, she gets two wild advantages. Now, wild advantages can be used uh, as any type of advantage, so she has a total of three possible advantages she can use in this battle. So, um, when you're spending advantages, um, they will help lessen the effect that you have to do. So, for instance, here, she would have to, one at a time, drop two skulls into the tower. Now, she could do that because she has several skulls in there, but does she want to lose skulls? Because, skull, first of all, you're losing skulls out of your possible supply, and skulls going into the tower can do bad things so uh, she has three advantages maybe she wants to spend one so when you're going to spend an advantage you just top tap this arrow oh now she only has it shows she spent one now she only has to drop one skull into the tower so she would take a skull drop it into the tower and then it may just stay in the tower it may uh, end up falling out into a kingdom if a skull ever falls out into a, one of the kingdoms, um, whichever kingdom it fell out into, it goes into one of the buildings. The player that um, it, that's their home kingdom, they decide what building it goes on. Now, even if a skull fell out and fell out here, but it rolled over here, it still goes into a building on the home kingdom that it initially fell into. And again, the player that um, that's their home kingdom, they decide what building it goes on. If it goes on to a dormant kingdom, you know, if it fell out over here on my north kingdom, which is dormant because there's not a player that that's their home kingdom, then the player who dropped the skull gets to decide what building that goes into. But then, um, you know, after you, then you decide, well, I still have another advantage. I have two more advantages because um, I had three. Do I want to spend another advantage so I don't have to see what? Or do I say okay and I go on? So maybe you drop the skull and decide to go on. So you hit confirm, then you go on to the next card. This one, oh, I've got to lose two warriors for each skull on or adjacent to my space. So I'd have to lose two, four, six, eight because there's that many. Uh, skulls adjacent to my space. Well, I have two advantages left, so maybe I want to spend one. Now I don't have to lose anything. So I say, ah, okay, that's good. So I go on uh, to my next card. Uh oh, that's a bad one. Lose five warriors and place a skull on the citadel in your current kingdom. Well, I still have one advantage left. I only spent, uh, you know, two of the three that I had, so I'll spend that advantage. Now I just have to place a skull on the citadel of my kingdom. So I take a skull out of the supply. I don't have any more advantages. I only had three. And I'd have to put it on the citadel of my kingdom. Then I confirm. Now I've defeated that 
uh, Lemure, so I would remove the token and hit continue. So that's how battles work. Now, if I ever had to, if, I, if during that battle I had to do something like lose warriors or lose spirit or something and I didn't have that to lose, then I would have to take a corruption card. Then I would still hit confirm like that card, I defeated that card. I would still go on, um, but I would have had to take a corruption. Uh, but again, if you ever have to take a third corruption, then the players lose the game. All right, the next thing is quest. Um, if you are where there's a quest marker, you can take the quest action if you fulfill uh, you know, what you need to do that quest. So for instance, the only quest we have right now is the main goal. So if a player was in that space um, with the main goal quest marker and they had the uh, four Askels treasures and the five virtues, they would select that. Um, then they would just hold to complete it and that quest would be complete. Now, um, after the first turn, you'll have companion quests and adversary quests. And again, they'll tell you what you have to have um, when you go to that location in order to complete that quest. And if you have those things, you go there, select the quest, and say complete. And then you'll get some reward, some benefit for that. Or, or maybe you just stop something bad. Usually the adversary quest, you may not get a reward for that, but you'll stop something bad from happening. The other thing besides just going to where there's a quest marker, sometimes there's a dungeon marker. There's various types. This one's a cave, but sometimes the app will tell you to put a dungeon out. And if so, you go there and you'll again, you'll select the quest, but then it'll open up a map of like a, uh, a cave or, or something. And you have to select what room you're going into and then it'll kind of like a battle it'll tell you uh, what you have to lose or or uh, give up in that room and um, again they will have different types of advantages um, that you can play like in this uh, cave you can spend beast advantages um, or as always wild advantages so you can spend one advantage in each room um, to try to lessen what you have to lose in that room um, and if you are able to pay the cost then you can go on to the next room eventually you'll get to a room where you complete the the uh, dungeon and it'll say you completed it and you'll get some reward for that um, in dungeons if you go so far and you decide well I'm, i better not go any further because i'm gonna I'm I'm out of warriors or spirit or I'm probably going to have something detrimental happen if I continue on. You can always exit um, the dungeon and then the next person that goes in there, yourself or another player, um, all the rooms that you had already completed would still be completed. So you would, somebody wouldn't have to go through those again. And we'll probably get to an example of that when we go through an example turn. Um, so those are the different heroic actions. Let's talk about the reinforce actions. So if you're at a citadel, which is you know this type of building, um, when you uh, decide to do your reinforce action, you can, for no cost, just gain one potion. Again, you draw a potion card. Let's just look at one for an example. Uh, this one, uh, you get to put it in your area, and then this one's good for, you can spend it uh, to gain one wild advantage. When you spend a potion, you just uh, return it to the bottom of the deck from whence it came. Um, but anyway, if you're at a citadel, you can do that. Or you can spend five spirit, to gain one virtue and when you do that you get to flip over one of your inactive virtues and then that one is then active and um, you'll have that one's power for instance this one lets you spend four potions to remove a foe from your space um, and each 
each uh, character has different virtues. They're not the same for each character. Um, but you, you can do one or the other. You can't do both of these. You don't get to gain a free potion and spend five to gain one virtue at the Citadel. You can do one or the other. Um, at the Sanctuary, you can gain one spirit for free or you can spend five spirit to remove all your corruption. So if you have corruption cards, that's a way to get rid of them. At the village, for free, you can gain six warriors, or you can spend one spirit to gain 12 warriors. And at the bazaar, you can gain one gear card, which, again, is one of these. Now, you can never have more than one of the same gear card, so if you have one long sword, you can't have another long sword, but you can have one of each. And they give you benefits, like this one gives you plus one melee advantage, this one gives you plus one stealth advantage. We already looked at this one, where it gives you plus one to your move. Um, anyway, they give you different benefits. And another reason it's good to have them is because um, sometimes in you're fighting a foe or something, or you're in a dungeon, uh, one of the requirements is to lose a gear and if you don't have a gear to lose then you have to take a corruption and you can spend two spirit to gain a treasure so remember the goal of uh, of this mission is to have all of Azkul's treasure so if he went to a bazaar spent two spirit he could gain one treasure one of the visible treasures here he could chain take the crown of Azkul put it in his play area you can see you've got air spot here for up to four treasures if you would ever gain uh, a fifth treasure then you would have to discard one back to the bottom of the treasure pile and whenever you gain a treasure then you draw a new one and put it on the so there's always a market of three unless some effect uh, says something differently now one other thing when you're doing a reinforce action you can decide to roll the haggle dice and that <laughs> may be good or it may be bad so if you decide you're going to roll the haggle dice when you do the reinforce action you roll it before and you see what result you get if you get a blank well then you just go ahead and do your regular reinforce action if you get this result you get to do your reinforce action and get a potion if you get this result uh, you get to do your reinforce action and get three warriors, but if you get this one or this one, then you don't get to do your reinforce action. You just lose it. Oh, and if you get this icon, then you get to draw a gear card, yeah, or you get to pick a gear. All right, so that's all the reinforce actions that you can possibly do. And again, you have to be at one of those buildings to be able to do one of those. If you're not, then you just can't do a reinforce action. And then the last thing you have to do is drop a skull into the tower. So let's just <laughs> show that. So every time at the end of a player's turn, they've got to drop a skull into the tower. So that right there, that not the, the tower just kept the skull. Now later, at some point, <laughs> the tower will probably spit that skull out somewhere. So sometimes... Um, it gathers up quite a few and then this they spit them all out at one time so after you drop the skull in the tower if it again if it falls out in a kingdom you have to put it in a building in that kingdom but then you check if there's any events well in this case the app says no events so you just go on and now it's the next player's turn and uh, so that that's how you play keep taking turns um, until either you complete the main goal. Once you complete the main goal, then you have to, the adversary will come out. You have to fight the adversary. Now, when you fight the adversary, he's um, pretty tough. So uh, unlike the other foes where you have to defeat them in the one battle, the adversary, you can battle them a little bit. Then if you think, eh, I better quit now, um, you can back out. And then you or another player can go and attack the adversary on a later turn. And any damage or uh, uh, any of his cards you've already beat or weakened, uh, that those will already be weakened. You don't have to do them again. So eventually, 
hopefully you, uh, you or another player will end up being able to defeat him. Now some of the things we haven't talked about is sometimes you'll be asked to remove a uh, one of these one of these seals from the tower and that may cause uh, skulls to fall out immediately if they do then you do that the same thing as we talked about other skulls it may reveal a glyph like this one of course it would be lit up if it told you to do it but a glyph matches up to one of your heroic actions so if ever a glyph is facing your home kingdom then whenever you want to take that uh, um, action it may not always be it could be a reinforce icon or it could be you know one of your heroic actions um, like this one is a quest uh, it's not lit up because I just randomly took this out but if that glyph is facing your home kingdom even if you're not in it anytime you want to take the quest action you have to pay a spirit before you get to take that quest action so if a, if a glyph is facing your home kingdom Again, even if you're not in that home kingdom, before you can take the action of the glyph that's uh, facing your home kingdom, it costs you one spirit to take that action. So to see the different events and different things that might happen with the tower, I think that's best uh, shown when we go through a couple of example turns. Um, but again, um, you can lose the game if you have no skulls to place when you need to place a skull you lose the game if uh, a player ever has to take a third corruption or you can lose the game if after the six month you've not completed the main goal so that's pretty much um, how to play the game um, again I didn't show <laughs> everything that happens with the tower and and all of that but uh, I think it's best to show that we'll go through a, a couple of example uh, rounds and uh, I think that'll show how that works so why don't we get to get started with that all right let's do some example rounds I uh, had to restart the game over I didn't save <laughs> where I was before and uh, let me center this a little bit better so it pretty much did the same. So I chose the same foes and all that, but it did, when I restarted, it did change where I put two skulls in each bazaar and village this time instead of each bazaar and citadel. And it did kind of move where my oryx and lemur uh, spawn. But otherwise, everything should still be the same. So let's uh, start with our first player, who is the... Uh, relic hunter he's going to do his banner action so he gets to gain one potion so we'll grab one potion this is his area he got a potion of the siren song and he can spin to move any foe up to two spaces all right so now he can do his middle of turn actions in any, any order he can move uh, do a heroic action or reinforce now remember, he's over here at the Citadel. So, um, we'll say, where's this Oryx? It's in a hills, and he's got plus two wild advantages in hills, and he's got a humanoid advantage. Uh, that's one of his virtues. And the Oryx, well, no, the Oryx takes melee and undead, not humanoid. Um, but he would have his two wild advantages in the hills. Um, well, let's not fight that Oryx. Let's say he's going to try to uh, start collecting some treasure. So he's going to move uh, one, two over here to the bazaar. And he's going to do a cleanse action. So that lets him take these uh, skulls put him back in the supply and then he gets uh, two spirit for doing a heroic action and now I think he's going to do a reinforce action there and he wants to get a treasure which he's at a bazaar 
so he can do the reinforce action at the bazaar which is he can for free gain one gear or he can spend two spirit to gain one treasure but he has this virtue it says when you reinforce at a bazaar that you can spend one less spirit to gain a treasure so he only has to spend one and he's going to take this uh, crown of Azkol so that's one of the four Azkol treasures that he has plus it gives him a a bonus of plus one humanoid advantage and after you reinforce at a sanctuary also gain spirit equal to the current month all right so um, that's all his action now he could have rolled that haggle die but he didn't um, that's all his action so now his last thing he's got to do is his end of turn so he's got to drop a skull in the tower that doesn't appear to have come out anywhere or done anything so uh, we look over here, it says there's no events, so we just hit continue. So now it's turn two, month one, so now we go to the next player, which is going to be the Brutal Warlord. Oh, and I forgot we should have flipped over this other treasure when we drew the one. Alright, well it's the Brutal Warlord's turn, so I'm just going to kind of turn my table so I can look from his point of view. His banner action is first, and he gains five uh, warriors. So we got that. We'll put that there. All right. Now he can decide what actions he wants to take. Um, this Lemur is magic and undead. His advantages are melee. He gets one wild advantage for battling, and he gets two wild advantage if he battles in forests. But this is in hills, so he doesn't uh, really have any good amount of advantages there. So. Uh, maybe he wants to go fight this uh, this auric over here. No, he's in the desert. All right. Well, we'll say he wants to do a reinforce action here at the citadel where he can gain a potion. And just for the heck of it, he's gonna roll the haggle die, and so he'll get a potion and a gear. So he'll draw a potion. And he got potion of 1000 strides that lets him spin to move any hero up to three spaces and because he rolled that haggle die he also gets to get a gear card and he'll take um, he'll take a long sword we'll put that that gives him plus one melee advantage all right so that's his reinforce action he hasn't moved or uh, done a heroic action yet all right we're gonna have him move one two he's gonna move over here where there's oryx is and he's gonna battle him so uh, melee or undead are the advantages he can use well he's got plus one melee advantage here plus one melee advantage here and plus one wild advantage when he battles so that's three advantages if he was in a forest he would get two more but he's not so he's got three advantages so he's gonna battle an oryx battle alright it's a level two so he just needs to pick two cards hopefully those are good luck alright the first one is lose two warriors for each skull on or adjacent to your space well uh, he's right here, so he'd lose two, two, four, six, eight. Um, so he has three advantages. So let's spend one. No losses, so he's happy with that. He could spend another one and maybe get something positive, but he's not. He's going to go on. Lose two or he got the same thing, so he's going to spend both advantages that he's got left here. So he actually gets to gain three warriors. So there's his three warriors that he gains, and now we'll confirm, and now he's defeated that Oryx, so we remove that Oryx token. You don't really get a reward, which <laughs> I kind of think you should get some kind of reward for defeating an enemy, but the only reward you get is taking it off the board, which I guess that's uh, kind of helpful because they can do bad things, but... Uh, he did a battle heroic action, so he also gets two spirit. 
and now he's got to end his turn turn so he's got to drop a, a, a skull in the tower and it just kept it and it says no events I wonder if I can get out of the sun here all right so now we move on to the orphan scions turn uh, her banner action is to gain a spirit so she will gain one spirit now let's see what she wants to do her, she probably needs to cleanse because she has that bonus where she gets to cleanse um, an extra um, but she might yeah let's have her do that so she's gonna move one here she's gonna cleanse as her uh, heroic action plus she gets after you cleanse you can remove one skull from any building so she'll go ahead and remove a skull from uh, there and now because she did a cleanse of a heroic action she gets two spirit and um, she's at a bazaar so she could gain a gear yeah let's have her do that and she's she's not gonna roll the haggle die she's just gonna gain a gear and she'll she'll get this brass talisman which gives her plus one magic advantage so her turns uh, already over that was pretty quick so now she's got to drop a skull in the tower oh it fell out over here that's the uh, east um, home kingdom which belongs to the brutal warlord so he gets to decide uh, where that goes so he says put it uh, in the sanctuary so that's where we put it and it does look like that triggered some event. Uh, the tower awakens. Astrider ignites the waters in the land. Put a river of fire token on a river of your choice. So we got to put one of these on a river, and uh, when you cross it, you lose six warriors. Um, we'll we'll just put it here, I guess. So if anyone crosses this river, they got to lose six warriors. All right, I'm going to hit continue. That ends the first month. Remember the first uh, turn. The first month, uh, there it's just one uh, turn per play. I turned off that fan. I know that's annoying. Going right, trying to find a place that's good to put this at, but. Uh, just can't find a place that's not getting reflection all right so new quest for month two smuggler's coin there's some text uh, this is a companion quest quest in the emerald expanse in the south so and then if you uh, spend spend one treasure so if you go there and spend one treasure you gain the smuggler's coin quest item so we need to put the companion quest uh, The companion quest uh, marker goes here, where she is actually, in the Emerald uh, Expanse in the south. Okay, and we hit continue, and we get an adversary quest. The Astrider sends its agents to work spells turn water into fire, you must stop them. Quest in Anza and spend three spirit or Astrider will ignite the river. So you'd have to go where this quest marker is spend three spirit and then you complete this quest so it's in the west in anza so you put the adversary squat quest marker here in anza and all right hit continue month two begins and now you can see it says the companion quest and where it is and what you have to do to complete it. Spend one treasure. Uh, for the adversary quest, quest it shows where that is. It's in Anza. Spend three spirit. And then you just continue with the, ne the next player um, from where the month ended. So we'll maybe finish this month. So alright, we're back to the relic hunter. His turn, his banner action. He gains one potion. So draw a potion. 
You got the potion of purifying breath. He can spin to remove up to two skulls from any building. That's pretty good. All right. So um, he's here um, to do that adversary quest. He needs another spirit. Um, so I don't know. Let's see. Maybe he wants to head over there. So it's one, two, three, four to get there. Um, so he couldn't get there in one turn. So maybe he wants to spend a spirit to double his move so he could move up to six. So one, two, three, four. And then he's going to stop there. And he's going to do a cleanse action. So he'll get to take these two skulls, put them back in the supply. That gives him two spirit for doing his heroic action. Now he can't, he has the three spirit required to do the quest now where he's at, but he's already taken his heroic action for the turn, so he can't take another one. He can do a reinforce. Uh, he's at a village, so he could gain six warriors for free. So. I think that's what he's going to do. So he's going to gain six warriors. Um, he still has two moves he could make, but he wants to stay here so he can complete this uh, quest on his next turn. So he's going to end his turn. He's going to drop a skull in the tower. And it says no event, so that's good. So we continue. And now we go to the next player's turn. Alright, well his banner action is to gain five warriors. So he's just going to do that. And then... Uh, he'll move one and do a cleanse action. He's going to cleanse these two skulls. That's, gonna, that's his heroic action, so he's going to get two spirit. Um... And now he is at a bazaar, so he could gain a gear or spend two spirit to gain a treasure. I think he's going to do that. He's going to spend two spirit, and he can gain one of these treasures. Now, none of them are an Asgol. Now, if he got an Asgol, I don't think I mentioned this in, this, in my rules overview, but uh, if once per turn, if you're in the same space with another character, you can trade. So you can trade... Uh, treasures or spirit or uh, warriors um, you just can't trade um, like corruptions or virtues but you can trade pretty much anything else so if he could have got a Ascol treasure he could have later traded it to the relic hunter um, but anyway he's going to take uh, I guess he'll take this one tears of shedu when you defeat a uh, stealth foe, gain one potion, plus it's plus one undead advantage. And then, of course, we turn this back over. All right, so he cleansed. He did a reinforce action. Uh, I think that's it for him, so he's going to now drop a skull in the tower. Uh, it came out over here, which is the west, so the... Relic Hunter gets to decide, um, oh no, that's the, uh, it is the Relic Hunter. I had their, I had their, uh, champion, I had the champion of the East over here on the Relic Hunter, but really he was from the West, and I had the champion of the West over here on the Brutal Warlord, but really he was in the East Kingdom, so I had that wrong. But anyway, the West, so the Relic Hunter does get to decide where this goes. It doesn't matter. All his buildings are pretty much empty. He'll just put it on the Citadel. But it does say that triggers an event, so if it continue. Scouts flame erupt from the tower. Scouts believe they will soon rain down on the bazaar. So mm, that could mean something bad is going to happen to the bazaar. Hit continue, and now we go to the next player's turn. All right, so her banner action is to gain a spirit, so she's going to do that. Um, now she's here where this uh, companion quest is, but remember that 
requires spending a treasure to complete that, and she doesn't have one. Um, the other players each have one, but she doesn't have one. She could get one at the bazaar where she's at, so um, let's have her do that. So for her first action, she's going to do a reinforce action at the bazaar. She's going to spend two spirit, and she's going to gain a treasure. Um, she'll gain this one just so I can talk about this one. Now, some of them, like this one that has the black background, you can just use that. You get plus one humanoid advantage. But like this one, you have to actually spend this to get this plus four magic advantages. So she would have to discard this card um, back to the bottom of the treasure deck. And then she would get a plus four mag magic advantages. Um, so that if they, if they say spend, you have to get rid of it. If they don't, then you just get the advantage. But uh, anyway, so she did the that reinforce action so now for her heroic action she's going to do um, the quest so it says here uh, at the emerald spend one treasure which see which she has so she's going to click that uh, quest in the emerald expanse and spend one treasure to gain the smuggler's coin quest item so hold to complete Gain the smuggler's coin quest item. Well, first she's got to spend her treasure, so that just goes to the bottom of the treasure deck. And then actually we should have drawn, when she drew that treasure card, we should have drawn another one there. Um, but now you go through the quest deck and find the smuggler's coin. So let me do that. All right, I found that. So it says, after you reinforce at a bazaar, move any number of treasures from the market to the bottom of the treasure deck, then refill the market. That's uh, beneficial, you know, because we don't have any Azkul's treasures out, so if we got to put those all back to the bottom of the treasure deck and refill some, we might get some more of Azkul's treasures. Because remember, we've got to have all four to do our main quest. Um, so that's... That's pretty helpful, but it, it's after she reinforces at a bazaar, which actually, um, well, she she just did a quest. She didn't just do a reinforce, but she does get her two uh, spirit for doing the quest, if I can get that. And now this quest marker can go off the board because it's completed. And so we'll just hit continue because she got that smuggler's coin. And now it's got this little sun here showing that that uh, quest is complete. Now, she never did move, um, so she could still move if she wanted to. So uh, we'll just say, yeah, she's going to move up here to this citadel. And uh, that's going to end her turn. So now she's got to take one of the skulls and drop it in the tower. And it says we got an event, so we continue. Zeta, remember that's the companion that the uh, blue player has, draws forth a part of powerful artifact from the realm. The player with Zeta may gain the top card of the treasure deck. That's the relic hunter. He has Zeta, so he gets the top card of the treasure deck. Lamp of Hope. It gives him plus one magic advantage, and when you cleanse, you can remove skulls from any space. So, that's kind of helpful. And then we hit continue. Uh-oh. Auric Strike. Place a skull on one building in each kingdom that has at least one auric. Well, this kingdom has an auric, so we'll put a skull there. And this kingdom has an auric, so... We'll put a skull there. I think that's the only kingdoms that have oryx. Alright, so we'll continue. Uh-oh. Faux spawn, a lemure in the inner hills in the east. So here's the east. There's the uh, inner king hills. Um, so that's where it goes. And we'll hit next. And now we go to the next turn. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and hopefully get to maybe where we do a dungeon so I wasn't 
since I wasn't able to really show that in the uh, in the rules overview because I didn't have um, quest or dungeon quest uh, in the app at that time so I'm gonna play ahead a little bit I'll come back uh, once I get to maybe something we haven't seen I just wanted to show something new I just did the brutal warlords turn he battled at Auric and he finished his turn and dropped a skull in and it says a seal is broken a seal is about to light up to show it should be removed so we do reveal and now we look at the tower and it will be flashing okay you can see these flashing lights over here and then it should be flashing which one needs to be revealed so it's this bottom one right here so we open that and a skull comes out so now it has to be placed that belongs to the south uh, came out in the south so the orphan scion gets to decide where it goes and We'll just say she says it goes there, but uh, now you have that opened uh, seal there. All right, so then we hit continue. All right, I'm going to go on. I'll come back again when something we haven't seen happens. All right, I'm going to do another action we hadn't quite seen yet. It's the Orphan Scion's turn. She's here at the Citadel. Um, she's going to do a reinforce action. Um, where she's going to gain or spend five, one, two, three, five spirit. And then she gets to gain a virtue. So she gets to pick one of these and she'll pick this one. At the start of your turn, remove one skull from a building in your home kingdom. So that's a power she'll have uh, going forward. Um, so I just wanted to show that that was an action, uh, something we hadn't seen done before. All right, so the orphan sign just finished her turn. She dropped a skull in the tower, and now the event came up that says the tower stirs. So I'm going to hit the rotate, and we'll watch and see if anything falls out. Or... Well, nothing fell out, but we do have the uh, banner action icon is floating. The green is lit up um, on the south um, kingdom so anytime the uh, orphan scion wants to do uh, her banner action now she'll actually have to pay a spirit um, to do that as long as that is facing there now I don't think we have that uh, going on anywhere else because we haven't re removed any seals anywhere else so that's the only one where that's happening right now but since her banner action is to gain a spirit and it's going to currently cost her a spirit to do it i mean she probably just wouldn't do it but uh anyway i'll stop there and come back again when something happens that we haven't seen all right we're in month four turn two it's the brutal war warlord's turn he's going to move to where this cave is and uh He's probably done, he doesn't have any good advantages against beast and it's in the grasslands or whatever so he doesn't have any good advantages of that but I just wanted to show how that works so um, that's a dungeon so he's going to move so we're going to do a dungeon action so we select that this is the one we're at crystal caves right here so he selects it all right it says entrance a dark wind whistles growing louder into it. so now you choose your path so there's only one possible path at this point so it's here and now it says lose six warriors now i forgot to see how many advantages he has i think it's none because uh, he doesn't have any beast he's not battling he's got an undead so he's got no advantages, so this isn't going to be good. So he's got to lose six warriors. So he loses six. Put that in. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so he did that. Continue. So now he chooses one of these two paths. So uh, he's going to go up here. Uh oh, lose 12 warriors unless you have dusky cloaks. Well, dusky cloaks is one of the. Uh, 
items here, but he doesn't have that, so now he's got to lose 12 warriors, which is all he has. But now he can continue. So now he could just decide, you know what, I don't have any more warriors. Um, I could continue and probably get a corruption. Eh, maybe let's do that. Maybe we'll get lucky. So he's going to go here. Lose two spirit and two warriors. Well, I don't, I do have the two spirit, but I don't have the, I, so I have to lose what I can, so I lose the two spirit. I don't have the two warriors, so now I have to take a corruption. You cannot cleanse a building with three skulls. But, that does go ahead and pass that. So now, now I could decide, eh, I better, I better quit, so I better exit the dungeon. Now the next person that goes into that dungeon, they will still have, like, if somebody else moved there and went in there again, um, you can see they will have explored everything. So what you've already done stays, um, and then you can just pick up from there. But uh, he exited. He didn't want to risk getting any more corruption. Um... I think that pretty much shows every kind of, well, pretty much every kind of thing that can happen in the game. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. This video is pretty long as it is, but uh, you can see how the game plays. Uh, I've seen people say this game is really easy, but I think this is the fourth or fifth time I've played it um, by myself, playing three players each time. And I haven't beat it yet, so, uh, you know, like if you see, I'm down to just two skulls, so I'm <laughs> about to lose any time now. I've only got uh, uh, three of Askel's treasures. Um, there's one more out there, and I do have four virtues for this guy, so if he can get one more virtue and one more treasure, he can cut, kind of try to go do the main goal, but then we still have to beat the ash strider so probably not going to happen but anyway um it's a fun game i wish uh, i'd like to play it with somebody else i haven't gotten to do that yet so we'll see but uh anyway i'm going to wrap it up thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it